so you're an absolute beginner to parallel TCG and maybe even card games. Maybe you just want a quick primer or perhaps you want to learn how card games work. In any case, this video will cover all that and more. First of all, card games can be a lot of fun and players of all skill levels can enjoy them. There are tons of layers to card games ranging from collecting cards, trading them, completing various card sets, building playable decks, and obviously playing the actual game. Parallel TCG, developed by Parallel Studios, is a card game first and foremost, with optional Web3 or blockchain features powered by the Echelon Prime Foundation. Like all card games, the objective of any match in Parallel TCG is the same. You have to reduce your opponent's health points to zero in order to win. This is done by damaging the opponent's visual representation or PFP on the battlefield using your cards. Your cards in the game are the ones you have in your playable deck. A playable deck comprises of 40 cards from one parallel faction only, with the allowance of adding universal cards. When you start playing at first though, you do not have access to custom decks and have to use the rookie mode. But inside the rookie mode, simply select a faction that you may like and click on the start match button. The rookie mode only supports preset starter decks, so you don't have to worry about custom deck building. Once a match has been found, the pre-match screen shows in-game names for all players, as well as their selected factions, paragons, and their solo queue ranks. Both players start the match with five randomly drawn cards that they can choose to redraw one more time in the mulligan phase. After this, both players continue to draw one card per turn from their remaining deck. All the information you need to make decisions during a match is available on the field, including player hands, paragons, card piles, and the turn timer. Simplifying the game's premise, you play cards from your hand onto the field, aiming to attack the opponent and countering the opponent's attacks as both of you race to deplete the other's health points first. If you have a unit on the field with one attack and three health points, and your opponent has a unit with two attack and one health point, provided your unit is active on the turn and can be used to attack, you can destroy the opponent's unit because your one attack point will deplete their one health point, whereas their two attack points will not deplete your three health points. This is just a simple example, but this interaction is at the core of any card game. In Parallel TCG, your cards can represent units, effects, relics, and upgrades. Units are cards with attack and health stats and can be used to attack other units or the opponent directly. Some unit cards can also have a vehicle attribute, adding an extra layer to their interactions with other cards and abilities. Effects, on the other hand, are cards with one-time abilities that can range from buffing your units to removing enemy units and relics and even dealing direct damage to your opponent. Relics, meanwhile, are played on the battlefield and continue to have active functions until they are removed. However, they cannot be attacked or removed by typical units. Relics can only be removed by specific effects and selected units, adding more strategic depth to a game. Finally, Upgrades are cards that attach onto other units and give them benefits such as health or attack boost or special abilities such as the kill switch upgrade for Ogin Core that allows you to destroy an enemy unit once your upgraded unit is destroyed. Before you play a parallel TCG game, you have to choose a faction. The parallel universe has 5 factions with varying themes, stories and so much more. I'd recommend that you start playing with any faction that appeals to you initially and over time as you learn more, you can switch factions. Every faction, however, has paragons or hero units that give you additional passive and or active benefits in your games. Your choice of a paragon will depend on your chosen playstyle and strategy for each deck that you build. Again, you don't have to worry about all that for now and can simply start playing the game by entering the rookie queue. Now let's quickly talk about card functions, energy and banking. Naturally, every card in the game has a function. For instance, the annihilate card is an effect that can destroy any target unit or relic. You can read these functions by hovering over any card in the game client, right-clicking on it, or browsing cards on the official Parallel website. Annihilate sounds like a very useful card, but it comes at a cost. The Annihilate card currently costs 5 energy units to play. Given how you start the game with 0 energy and typically gain only 1 energy unit per turn, you will most likely be able to play this card around turn 5, which is around the mid-game stage. Similarly, some cards may have 1 or even 0 energy costs, while others may cost 9 or even 10 energy units. All of this adds strategic depth to the game. Underpinning this is one of Parallel's unique mechanics, that of banking. In most card games, energy is either automatically increased every turn, or requires players to put specific cards on the field in order to gain it. In Parallel, you can place any one card from your hand into the bank per turn and gain one energy permanently until that card is somehow removed from the bank. However, removing cards from a bank is an advanced interaction that you do not need to worry about right now. 
What should be noted is that banking is optional and that you can only bank one card per turn. But if you don't bank cards, you don't get energy and cannot play higher cost cards as the match progresses. Banking a card also gets you an extra card draw at the end of each turn, except on turn one if you go first. Moving on, some cards may have additional keyword-based abilities that trigger when various conditions are met. Examples of such keywords are Defender and Muster. Units with Defender give you the option to block attackers aiming to deal damage to you or your units on the field. Muster, on the other hand, indicates that the card has an ability that automatically triggers when the card is played on the field. This can be a game changer given how most cards are inactive on the turn that they are played and can only be used to attack on the next turn. Parallel TCG, like other TCGs, has a variety of keywords denoting such functions. I will cover the complete list in a future video, but the most common ones, apart from Defender and Muster, are Aftermath, denoting that an ability is triggered once that unit is destroyed or removed, and Retaliate, which means an ability is automatically triggered when that unit takes damage on the field. Understanding the keywords as well as specific card functions is key to crafting your decks and strategies. Additionally, knowing the active and passive abilities of Paragons is critical to building your decks and crafting strategies to counter your opponents. Remember, at the end of the day, the game only has one win condition, depleting your opponent's health points. As long as you can do that, you will be victorious. Win three matches in the rookie queue to unlock other game modes and don't forget to view card functions and create decks on the official website at parallel.life.